Hi there, people. My name's David. Uh, for a long time, I have been a science communicator, um, working mostly, largely, hugely, <laughs> with street performance techniques. People, we've got a problem. It's quite a well-known and quite a defined problem, but it's still a problem. Um, there are large chunks of the youth of this planet who are pretty much disenfranchised from science, as don't see it as part of their lives, as don't see themselves as being part of our amazing scientific future. Um, to, to put it another way, the people who attend um, science events and science um, organizations and institutions, and well done for doing that, but they're already in love <gasps> with science. What are we gonna do with the rest of the population? Leave them to their own devices. Don't they deserve to have the chance of a stake in our scientific future as well? This little session is about one of the potential solutions to that. Welcome to the world hey, of science busking. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Science busking. What's that? You ask, great, David, what is it? Okay, fair enough, good question. Science busking is the use of street performance techniques, not so much to juggle, not so much to do magic, although, of course, there's a whole bunch of science in both of them, but to gather hold and inspire diverse audiences with the, with the fabric of our scientific lives, increasing the science capital of the people around us so they can feel part of this scientific future we're so bravely walking into. And I suppose that begs another question, doesn't it? You're all saying, Oh, that sounds great, David, but what is it? Can you give us an example of science busking? Here's a little one we often use as an, as an introduction. So what we're going to do, I uh, need your help in this. It requires the use of both of your index fingers. Now, you can do this standing up or sitting down. It's absolutely fine. It works both ways with one index finger, whichever one you want. Stick it out in front of you, arm's length in front of you. With your other one, arm's length behind you. See, you can see I'm there. And with your eyes open, what we're going to do on the count of one, two, three, and you can do this with me if you like, we've got three opportunities to bring that back index finger forwards and touch the tip of our front index finger. Here we go, one, two, three, go. One, two, Three, go, and one, and two, and three. Give your arms a bit of a shake, quite stressful on the muscles in your arms, I know. And I bet lots of us manage three out of three there, or very close to that. Well done. Now we're going to try it again, but slightly differently. So... Arm out front, index finger out at the front, index finger at the back. But this time, we're going to close our eyes. Yes, close your eyes. No peeking, though, people, no peeking. Close your eyes and do the same thing on one, two, three, go. With me. One, two, three, go. And one. Ooh, a very close miss for me. And two. Yes, a hit. And three. Ah, yes, just about a hit again. And, and open your eyes. And, 
And well done. And I bet there are some people out there in our audience who managed three out of three. And if you got two out of three, well done. If you got one out of three, well done. If you got none, don't worry about it. Um, that little piece of busking science, of whole audience participation science, is called proprioception. And it's this idea that our brains have almost like a force field around us, have this area of spatial awareness. So we know where one part of our body is in relation to another part of our body. And if you think about it, we're using it all the time. It allows you to scratch your nose at night, whereas you, and you, you know, when you're in bed before you go to sleep. There's a little example of playing with science. What science busking is, it's a hard thing to define, but think of it as a set of really accessible, really transferable, really joyous and achievable communication skills that can rock up anywhere and talk to anyone on this planet and get them questioning and presenting and, and celebrating our scientific world. Um, and that's such a beautiful and such a powerful thing. Um, part of my street performance education took place at the World Street Performance Championship, Championships in Dublin. If you ever get a chance to go there, go. It'll change your life. It changed mine. Uh, and there you can go and you can rock up and you can see people who start off, these incredible performers who start off with a set with no audience. And about eight minutes later, they've got 1,500 to 2,000 people lapping up every word they say. And it's not just occurred to me, it's occurred to many science communicators over quite a period of time. It's, we ignore those transferable skills to do that at our peril. Busking. It, it, it's all about play. And th th there can't be any of us here who can say, really say, OK, well, I have never played with something at some point in my life. Educationalists know very well that it's like natural selection. Chose play as one of the premium ways for us to interface with our world, to proactively learn about it. And busking is a champion of play, uh, encouraging it, focusing on it, celebrating it, supporting it to play with our scientific world. I think it's time we played with some science again. And I've got a few questions for you. What is that? What is that? And I can hear a host of you saying, this, come on, David, it's a red balloon. Well done. Observation is key in science. Yeah, it's a red balloon. And then I've got another question for you. What is that? What is that? Yeah, it's a cell phone. It's a mobile phone. It's my old Moby. Here's the thing. Can we, using science, get a mobile phone inside a balloon? Some of you are saying, yeah, of course we can, David. Thank you for your support. And some of you are saying, no way. And I appreciate your skepticism. And some of you are saying, I don't care. <laughs> and that's fine as well. Here we go. Mobile phone inside a balloon, world exclusive. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. World exclusive, people. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. Here we go. Three, two, you know, I get so nervous when I do this. It's the pressure. You set yourself up for success, don't you? 
Uh, right, okay, okay, okay. This time, this time, this time, this time. Three, two, one. I want you to do is really watch the phone and watch the balloon. Watch the balloon and watch the phone. Observation is key in science, people. Sorry, sorry. This time, this time, here we go. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. Three, two, one. Ah. Aha. Look at that. We did it. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. Um, some of you, I heard, I distinctly heard some of you say, David, we want you to turn it around. You want to turn it around. You want me to turn it around? Okay, I'll turn it around. There you go. Turn it around. You told me to turn it around. To turn it around. Oh, oh, what's that? You said you want me to turn the phone around. Okay. There you go. Turn the phone around. You told me to turn the phone around. Just turn the phone around. You, you, you see, in science, you only get good answers if you ask good questions. Um, oh, right, you want to see the back. There you go, there's a the back. <laughs> What's that, you want me to move my hand? There you go, people, to move my hand. Or oh, not this hand, this hand. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. So what's a science? <gasps> You would you believe it? My balloon just burst. <laughs> you can't, you can't always have a spur. Here we go. So balloons made out of rubber. So we're investigating some material science the material properties of an elastic substance like rubber. We applied a force with my phone, through my arm, through my muscles, through my phone. Here we go. What you do, you push very hard and you let the air come out of here very fast. Three, two, one. Mobile phone inside a balloon using science. Now do have a go at that yourselves but be careful it's very easy to drop your phone the first few times that you do it there's a distinct there's a knack about it so do it over something soft like your bed or a settee or a chair or a cushion something like that easy to drop your phone the first time you do it excellent um made out of pretty everyday and accessible materials so lots and lots of people can try it um Going to conclude now, science busking is this collection of really transferable, really accessible, really effective, really joyous communication skills that can talk to people from being four years old to 104 years old about our scientific world and the part in it and how it's already touching us all already. And all we have to do is reach out and touch it back. Um, I was very lucky, my final point, I was very lucky in 2012 to be appointed the um, official trainer and a performer for the Singapore National Science Busking Championships. And in those championships, I got to meet the eventual winners, two 11-year-old children called the Sci-Fi Girls. And they were incredible. I mean, they blew me away. They were so good. They really, really deserved to win. And, I, well, you know, it's a few years ago, and I'm really thinking about them and imagining them carrying on the scientific studies through school and through university so they find themselves maybe now as early career scientists or early career engineers using the busking skills to sell the love of the science and its content to the world people you give it a chance science busking can really do a job for us thank you very much